Okay, so we are talking about my all-time favorite fruit, coconut, and the wonderful things in the amazing Cocos nuciferia coconut. Uh, coconut fruit, which by the way is not really a nut. It's not called a coconut botanically, but it's uh, actually a member of the droop family, which is also known as the stone fruit family. Apricots are a member of the stone fruit family. Uh, nectarines, berries, coffee, pistachios, these are all part of the uh, stone fruit family and coconuts are included there. The coconut fruit is multifunctional. There's lots of things you could do with coconuts. The shell is a great source of fiber. The meat is so delicious. Oh my gosh, I love coconut. It's a great source of calories. It's a great source of vitamins. It makes a great addition to smoothies. You can make it, uh, add it into soups. You can grate it and put it on salads. You can grate it and then toast the shreds in the oven and mix it into yogurt. You can bake with it. It goes well with cinnamon. It goes well with ginger and garlic. Two hot spices and coconut go together. Ginger, garlic, red pepper. You want something spicy with just a little tiny hint of sweetness. In fact, the combination of coconut meat and hot spices, or at least warm spices, can be a very effective appetite suppressant. The combination of the hot spices or the warm spices with the coconut are very satisfying. You can also use coconut oil and hot spices like cayenne or ginger or even regular black pepper to make an awesome warming massage oil. You can rub your feet, your toes with it. If you've been running or standing all day, you want a nice foot massage for yourself or someone you love, all you have to do is take your coconut, uh, coconut oil and, and just apply a slight amount of heat to keep it in a liquid form. It doesn't take much. You add your spices uh, into, uh, into the coconut oil, into the warm coconut oil, and let it sit there for 60 minutes or, or two hours or three hours. You can do as long as you want. Then you strain, uh, strain the residual herb. You remove this blend from the heat. You let the coconut oil harden, and you will have an awesome massage product that will last you for years. Well, the coconut oil, coconut oil hardly ever goes rancid, but it takes a long time for it to go rancid. But with the cayenne and the ginger and the hot spices, you can extend the lifespan of your coconut oil massage product. If you want to make a healthy, uh, nice, healthy filling snack, you can shred up some coconut, add some red pepper and ginger, keep it in a plastic bag and take it to work. Keep it in your car when you feel hungry. Do a couple couple spoonfuls of this mixture and you're going to find yourself less likely to snack. The appetite suppressant features of coconut are due in part to its vitamin content, its mineral content, as well as its fiber content, but nothing in coconut is more valuable in terms of appetite suppression, in terms of weight loss, in terms of fat metabolism, in terms of energy, than the oil, the specifically the fraction of the oil that are called MCTs, or medium chain triglycerides. Yesterday, we're, we left off saying that you can exploit uh, the power of MCTs for vegetables uh, in terms of getting the nutrients out of vegetables. You can use coconut oil to release the nutrients out of veggies. And not only will you get the protective nutrients out of the veggies, but you're going to get a huge dose of MCT oil, which in addition to being a great solvent, for pulling out these fatty nutrients is a source of rapidly used and effectively used and efficiently used energy. What makes these MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, so interesting is the fact that they're oils, so they have this lipo characteristic. Remember yesterday we said that there's two kinds of chemicals in all of nature. You have lipo chemicals and then you have hydrochemicals. Lipo meaning fatty, hydro meaning watery. These are the, this is the basic polarity of chemistry and biochemistry in the body. Thing, uh, substances are either lipo, as in fat-soluble or fatty, or they're hydro, as in water-soluble or hydrophilic. Philic meaning loving, hydrophilic, water-loving, lipophilic, fat-loving. Fancy way of saying water-soluble or fat-soluble. But what makes MCT so interesting is the fact that they're oils, so they're lipo, they're fat-soluble, but they have a slightly hydro characteristic. In the world of oils, they're very unique. They're like water-soluble oils. They're not exactly water-soluble. They won't go right into water, but they'll kind of, sort of. 
We say they're water dispersible instead of water soluble. They don't go right into water, but they kind of disperse. They spread throughout water, which allows the body to handle them in a very unique fashion that is different from ordinary fats. This makes these things, these MCTs, so unbelievably valuable for nutrition as well as for medicine, as well as for pharmacy, people who are dealing with gallbladder issues, liver issues, intestinal issues, anybody who has fat malabsorption issues, and that's a lot of people, would be really, really smart to be exploiting MCTs and coconut. It's hydro quality, it's water soluble quality, allows MCTs to be quick acting. Yesterday we said hydro elements, hydrochemicals are quick acting. And we said lipochemicals are more slow acting. Well, MCTs, because they've got this slightly hydro nature, are quick acting. They're easy to process. It makes them more, makes MCTs, even though they're definitely uh, technically an oil, they've got a slightly carbohydrate quality. They're almost like sugars. They have an easy to process quality. This hydro nature, this carbohydrate nature of MCTs makes them super important for people dealing with fat malabsorption syndrome and also for people who don't want to, who are eating lots of fat but don't want to gain weight. Don't want fat to be stored. MCTs aren't stored. They're used for energy. This makes them an athlete's best oil friend. Bodybuilders love MCTs. If you read, pick up a bodybuilding magazine or a weightlifting magazine, muscle and fitness and such, you're going to see, guaranteed, you're going to see at least one or two ads for MCT oils. That's where I started. That's where I first heard about MCTs 30 years ago when I was lifting weights. So MCTs don't need to go through all the complex processing steps of ordinary fats. They go right to work. Ordinary fats have to be processed through the lymphatic system. MCTs go right into the blood, which means if you've got any lymphatic issues, and that's lots of people, clogged lymph, or any kind of digestive problems, really, you're going to want to exploit, take advantage of medium-chain triglycerides. All right, got lots more to say about MCTs. We want to take your phone calls here uh, in our next segment, towards the end of our next segment, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Welcome back to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow we're going to be talking to... Uh, what's this gal's name here? Sonia Satra. From, uh, she's a former actress. She was on The Guiding Light and One Life to Live. A uh, former soap opera actress. And she's now doing something called Modicize, which is an uh, exercise program. I think she developed it. Kind of cool exercise program uh, for losing weight in a fun kind of way. Involves visualization and uh, goal setting and affirmations and some high intensity intensity cardio workouts. We're going to be talking to Sonia Satra tomorrow. Uh, that'll be in our second segment. We'll take your calls earlier tomorrow and we'll take your calls here towards the end of our segment now. If, you're, uh, if you've been left on hold in the past, now's the time to give us a call and we'll get you first up. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you're interested in joining the Brightside Ben team, starting yourself a longevity business, or getting your products at the wholesale price, if you want to be part of the longevity culture, if you get excited about nutrition, if you get excited about helping people, I know you do out there because I've been talking to you guys now for going on three, going on five years now, going on four and a half years. Don't you get excited by the idea of using nutrition to feel energized, to feel to feel powerful. There's no drug in the world that can make you feel energized and powerful like a good nutritional supplement program. Don't you get the importance of using nutrition, the raw materials, the raw material building blocks? Don't you get the importance of using nutrients and dietary strategies to build the body? If you're interested in being part of the longevity culture, if you're interested in making a little bit of money selling longevity products, or if you just want to get the pro your products at the wholesale price, call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. They can tell you. They can tell you all about it. Okay. MCT oils, medium chain triglyceride oils, are just they go right to work. They go right through, uh, right into the blood. They don't have to be transported through the bot through the lymphatic system like ordinary fats do. Many people dealing with lymphatic congestion issues, and that's a lot of folks are going to have fat absorption problems. If you have a gallbladder removed, liver problems, intestinal problems, stomach problems, pancreatic problems, or if you just want to get quick energy, if you're weightlifting or you're bodybuilding, you're an athlete, MCT oils are the way to go. And coconut oil is about 60 to 70% MCT oils. And that's one of the major, major, major benefits of coconut oil, even though it is an oil and I know oils get a bad rap. Coconut oil is one of the more stable oils in the MCT content, in my opinion, makes these things very, very valuable. MCT stands for medium chain triglyceride. 
And what this really means is they're, well, they're not big, they're not small, they're medium. What we call fats are technically triglycerides. We generically call them fats. In the vernacular, we say fats, but what we really mean is triglycerides. If you're a chemist, you want, you're not going to say fats, you'll say triglycerides. And triglycerides come in three sizes. You've got short triglycerides, you've got medium triglycerides, and then you've got long triglycerides. Long, medium, and short. Those are the three main classifications of fats, three main classifications of triglycerides. And as these triglycerides get longer and bigger, they get more substantial. The shorter ones, these are are really, really fascinating. They're called short-chain triglycerides or short-chain fatty acids. Some people call them SCFAs. And these SCFAs are so insubstantial that they're almost volatile. They are volatile. Some people call them, uh, scientists call them volatile fatty acids. So you've got three main triglycerides, three main sizes of fats, long, medium, and short. And the uh, medium ones, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. We've been talking about that for the last couple of days. The medium ones, medium chain triglycerides, have certain qualities. The long ones, long chain triglycerides, they have quali certain qualities. And then the short ones have their own qualities. They're volatile. They're made in the large, large intestine, the short chain fatty acids. And they're mega, mega important for the health of the intestine, the large intestine. This is really interesting. These short chain fatty acids are actually produced by bacteria that react or that act upon fiber. They digest fiber and they release these volatile fatty acids. And these volatile fatty acids sustain or energize the cells of the large intestine. So if you're dealing with any kind of intestinal problems, you want to know about short chain fatty acids. Butter and dairy are really good food sources of, of uh, short chain fatty acids, but the main way we get these short chain fatty acids is by fermentation of fiber by bacteria in the gut. So to really have effective an effective amount of short chain fatty acids, eating butter is a great way to do it, a great way to get your SCFAs, but the best way is to make sure you're getting enough fiber and make sure you're using probiotics. The reaction uh, between probiotics, the digestion of the, pro of the fiber by probiotics releases these SCFAs, these short chain fatty acids, um, which are gassy and volatile and they kind of mist through the uh, intestine and they, co they uh, uh, coat the intestinal cells and then the intestinal cells can suck in the SCFA gas, if you will, and use the SCFAs for energy. Very important if you're dealing with any kind of large intestine problem, if you have chronic diarrhea, if you have uh, if you have uh, constipation issues, it's just, it's just a great strategy. Another reason why fiber is so important. The hardest fats for the body to process are the long chain fats. So medium chain triglycerides, short chain triglycerides, short chain fats, they're not a problem for processing, but it's the long chain ones, the long fats, those are the ones that are problematic. It doesn't necessarily mean that long chain, you want to stay away from these fats, it just means that there's more work that goes into how the body handles these long chain fats, these extended fats. And then long chain fats can be stored. It's more one of the reasons why we get fat. We're eating these long chain fats. Or they can feed the wrong kinds of bacteria. Long chain fats can. And if you have intestinal problems, liver disease, gallbladder, uh, gallbladder missing, you want to be very, very careful about using lots of ordinary fats. MCTs require less gallbladder work. They're ideal if you have a gallbladder removed. You don't have to, the gallbladder doesn't have to contract as much. It doesn't have to, doesn't have to squirt as much bile if you've had, uh, if you're using MCT fats. All of this is, all of this, all of these reasons are why coconut oil should be, in my opinion, should be a part of everybody's diet. There's no reason not to use coconut oil unless you don't like the taste. I don't know anybody who doesn't like the taste of coconut oil or coconuts. Coconut oil is stable. Uh, the, remember, the main knock on most nutritional oils and food oils is their instability. They're high energy. They become oxidized and they convert into potentially dangerous free radicals, and this is most especially the case with two of the longer chain fats, the ones we call essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids are super important for nutrition, but they're very, very unstable. Now, you're not going to get a lot of essential fatty acids, essential fats in coconut oil. Uh, you'll get some, but you're not going to get, uh, you certainly you're not going to get the same amount that you will do in a, in a vegetable oil, an ordinary vegetable oil, but the hard oil, the hardness of the oil, accounts for the stability of the oil. In fact, food processors love hard oils. The whole chip industry, the potato chip industry, the corn chip industry, the cracker industry, really was born when we figured out how to create synthetic 
long oils. When we figured out how to create synthetic stable oils, these synthetic stable oils are called hydrogenated oils. We've talked about that in the past. Crisco was, the, was one of the early ones. And these hydrogenated oils, these, these uh, uh, artificially hardened oils, artificially stabilized oils, are really the darlings of the snack food industry. And it's one of the reasons why companies like Nabisco and Keebler and Frito-Lays are some of the most profit-intense, wealthiest companies on the planet. We'll continue talking about that tomorrow as we continue talking fats and MCT oils and saturated fats and coconut oil, all as it regards extraction of nutrients from veggies, which we will be getting back to. Uh, we'll get, be getting back to that subject as well. Extraction of nutrients from veggies. And then we'll finish up talking about nitrates and some of the amino acids that you can use to beef up the nitrogen content, to improve the nitrogen content in your body. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got a line open for you. We'll get your phone calls if you're on hold. Hang tight when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. Don't go away. Got more good health information right after this. For tomorrow, we're going to be talking to... Uh, Sonia Satar, I think she's, see how she says her name, Sonia Satra. She's a former actress and she's developed an exercise program called Modisize that involves mind, body, and uh, a lot of physical work as well as visualization and uh, affirmations and goal setting kinds of things. We'll talk to Sonia tomorrow in our second half, the second half of the program. 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Welcome to the Bright Side, Brian in New Hampshire. What's going on, buddy? Hey, Ben. It's hey, Brian. listening to you every, every week. I've been listening to you for over a year. And, I appreciate and, it. And, I mean, I, I'm, my fiance is a nutritional advisor, but she, me, and her, me, and you, uh, me and her listen to you every single day. Oh, that's awesome. All. Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. How can we help you? I have a two-part question. I'm sipping on, um, on, my, on my multivitamin mix, but I, I, I wanted to ask if it's okay. It seems kind of contradictory, but I mix baking soda with vitamin C. Mm. And does that kind of, it would, does that cancel, it seems to mm -hmm. me that it would chemically cancel each other out, no? No, not at all. It makes it less acidic. It makes the vitamin C less acidic. There's no reason why. Does you get a little fizz when, when, you, when you add the baking soda to the vitamin C? Does it fizz up? Yes. Yeah, that fizziness is a sign that you're neutralizing the acid. Not a problem at all. In fact, you might even improve the absorption. That's not, that's not a bad thing. Do you like the taste okay, of it? that was my intention. That was, what, I'm sorry? Do you like the taste? Oh, absolutely! Yeah, the, the baking soda I have to kind of I have to sweeten it with a little bit of stevia, and I kind of mix in um I, I kind of mix in my multivitamin uh, uh, garden of life, which has a lot of uh, vegetables in it, so it kind of cancels it out. Interesting. Now, do you want to use the bicarb? Because there's other ways you can neutralize the vitamin C if you want, but bicarb will work. Arginine is a nice amino acid that will neutralize the the vitamin C, and then you'll get the benefit of the arginine. That's a good point. Yeah, uh, I would use it. Was, Go ahead. It was more about worrying because I, 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 I'm switching off the smoking, and when I smoke, I want to ensure that I had a nice vitamin C throughout the day. Dude, you are a smart man. How'd you know that? Listening to you, of course. Okay, all right. That's good. That's a good answer. Yeah, a vitamin C, making sure after you smoke, you, you put vitamin C in your throat is a very, very wise strategy. It's even wiser, though, to quit smoking, though, bro. That's just true. saying. And it's just something saying. I'll transition. It's something I'm transitioning to slowly. Okay, good deal. My, my second part question, though, is something that's more important. My, okay. uh, I have the most difficulty convincing somebody close to me, my mother. Right? Okay. She doesn't listen to me no matter what I say. Yeah. So she recently contracted diabetes, and she's she's convinced no matter what me and my fiance say that it's genetic and there's nothing she could have done about it. Well, you now, know, it's I, horrendous, and I've got a chromium vermadium, but she won't take it. Well, here's the deal. Okay, first of all, nobody contracts diabetes. You've got to disabuse your mom of that notion. Diabetes is a process. You eat a certain food, and then the diabetic process kicks in. You don't eat that food, there's no diabetic process. Nobody has diabetes. This nominalization of diseases empowers doctors, disempowers people. And I don't appreciate when some medical professional tells anybody they have a disease. Nobody has a disease. Disease is a process. It's a verb. Nominalization, making it into a noun, making it to something you contract, making disease into something you have is a magical trick, a black magical trick that abuses people. And it's not fair. Now, I'm not saying doctors know what they're doing. They don't. But the point is, is that when we think we have something, then we have to get rid of it. If you understand that it's a process, all you have to do is stop doing it. 
stop doing something, you know diabetes. She won't have diabetes if she doesn't eat. It's an eating disease. How ironic is it or not, ironic, how tragic is it that the uh, third leading cause of death in this country is something that's a process that we can, uh, we can instantly change. Your mother can be, not, uh, can be a non-diabetic in a second. All she has to do is eat differently or change what she eats or, I'm sorry, or not eat. You understand what I'm saying? So you don't contract diabetes. And the second part of your question is also interesting, Brian, because I get this all the time. You know, how do I talk to my mom? How do I talk to my friend or my, my, my girlfriend or my wife or my husband? We don't. Our job is to love our mothers and fathers and friends and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, spouses and boyfriends and girlfriends, not to persuade or convince them. They need compassion and they need love, but persuasion, is, it's none of our business. We have to watch our loved ones suffer. This is the hardest thing a human being has to do. One of the hardest things a human being has to do is watch their loved ones suffer. But that's our problem. Brian, you with me, bro? Yeah. It's your problem. It's your issue. It's not your mother's issue. If your mother wants to be a diabetic, your job is to love her and watch her suffer and then deal with it. It's your issue to deal with. And that's how we all have to understand. That's the way we have to understand our loved one's health challenges. We all have our journeys. And so love and compassion always. But as far as persuasion and helping them, you know, make her a Beyond Tangy Tangerine drink and sit, leave it on the counter for her. Make her a veggie juice and leave it on the counter for her. But persuasion, I don't do persuasion. I always tell that to folks when they want to do a three-way call. I say, I'm not persuading anybody. I only help people who want to be helped. And, and I suggest that's, that's an attitude that you might want to take on. That's good advice. I okay. appreciate that very much. Good deal. Thank you so much, Brian. Thanks for the kind words. I really appreciate it, bro. Have a good day, man. Say hi to your girlfriend. Hey, you deserve it. Take care, You man. bet. I will. Thanks, okay, man. buddy. Bye-bye. All right, Leon in Oregon. What's up? Welcome to the Bright Side, bro. Leon, what's going on? Hello, right. Leon. Hey, hey, that's you. You're Hello. Leon. I'm Ben. What's up, Leon? How you doing, oh, man? Okay. <laughs> I switched over from speakerphone listening to now. Yeah, I was on Friday and I couldn't back you Monday in regards to the cyst, and then I got another question on my kidney. Sure. You oh, went you're so the fast, I can't keep track of it. I'm sorry, but the, you can listen to the archives. I know I go fast because I want to get you as much information as possible. Like I was saying before, this is a content-rich show. I know I go fast. I try not to, but there's just so much to talk about. But you always have the archives that you can listen to. So the cysts, as I was telling you, you want to think about insulin, which is a sugar hormone, um, among other things, but primarily a sugar hormone. And you want to think about female hormone, estrogen. Not that you're a female or that only men or uh, only women have female hormones. That's kind of a misnomer. Uh, female hormone or estrogen is made by both both genders. But when estrogen goes wacky, skin cells or cells in general will grow. So estrogen and insulin are the two most likely suspects for cysts. For insulin, you want to. It's very simple. All you got to do is restrict your limit or minimize the amount of refined carbohydrates you're using, and then use nutrition to support insulin. Leon, I got to take a break. Don't go away, all right? I'll finish up, and then we'll get your second question as well. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this time out. Don't go away. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Leon, my man in Oregon. You there, bro? Yeah. You there, my Okay, so cysts, and I'm not, uh, it doesn't matter that they're on the kidney, Leon. It doesn't matter where the cyst is, breast, kidney, uterus, skin, wherever. You want to think insulin, which means blood sugar, all right? And you want to think estrogen, which means male hormone, or stabilizing it, or balancing it out with male hormones and progesterone. So first of all, you got to work on your blood sugar. Now, I think you said you're 68 years old, correct, Leon? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the chances are very, very good that you've got what's called dys glycemia, messed up blood sugar. This meaning messed up. Well, glycemia. I said it was all right on my life. No, so it doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they doesn't say. Matter. Okay. No. Right. Diagnost you go by your symptoms, not your diagnostics. Diagnostics are measurements that are based on a bell curve. You're not a bell curve. They're outliers on the bell curve. And this is the way medicine works. Medicine, diag medical diagnostics is for the ignorant. And I'm not talking about you, Leon. I'm talking about medical professionals. It's for ignorant medical professionals that don't understand how to read the body, that don't understand the code of the body, that maybe don't even understand the body. So what they do is they send the, th they take your blood, they send it off to a lab, they test it, they come up with a number, they go to their little book, they look at the numbers, and they say, okay, Leon's a diabetic. Oh, or they say, okay, Leon's blood sugar's fine. You know how stupid diagnostics are for blood sugar? Let me give you an example. If your blood sugar came back at 119.9999, they tell you you're not a diabetic. But if it came back at 120, they tell you you are. That's how stupid diagnostics is. 
You know, see, see what I'm saying, Leon? 119.9999, no, you're not a diabetic. But 120, you are. Why? Because it's on the bell curve. So anyway, cysts are a sign of insulin problems. If you're 68 years old, it's almost guaranteed you've got some kind of insulin resistance or some blood sugar issues. Wean yourself off of uh, foods that are, or have a, minimize your intake of these foods that mess up your blood sugar, more protein, more coconut oil. Also use the chromium, vanadium, beyond tangy, tangerine, anything you could do to help stabilize sugars. You also, and by the way, you'll lose weight when you do this. Your blood pressure will drop when you do this. You'll increase your longevity when you do this, and your cysts will go away when you do this. So you have multiple benefits. Next thing you want to do for the estrogen issue is you want to start to do some weight-bearing exercises. Maybe use progesterone cream, which can balance out estrogen, and then get yourself on uh, uh, building nutrients. Estrogen is a is a, a, a hormone that's involved with stress and rapid division of cells and inflammation. Male hormone, testosterone, is a hormone that's, that's associated with building muscle. And so you want to start using what I, what I call anabolic or building nutrients. 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate would be a smart idea for you. The entire B complex, especially vitamin B5, pantothenic acid would probably be, good, be a good idea for you. I'd be using maybe uh, 1,000 milligrams of pantothenic acid a day, vitamin B5, with your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. And you may want to consider getting on the Prost FX, which can also have a nice balancing effect on female hormone. They say you had a second question, Leon? Yeah, my other one is my daughter for years is ever since she was a young baby, well, not young baby, but at least a young child, she's always had a problem getting out in the sun. She gets itchy on her skin. What causes itchy that? Itchy is always itchy, redness, rashy on the skin is always, always, always a defensive response. If it happens topically, it means the skin is defending itself from some kind of offending agent that, co hap uh, that contacted the surface of the skin. This is rare. It doesn't happen a lot. Detergents can do it or allergens, poison ivy. Uh, other plant secretions can sometimes do it topically. Latex can do it. Nickel can do it. Talc can do it. Uh, but this is rare. Most of the time, it's a defensive response from the inside out. So what you do when you, get, when you have rashes, itchiness on the surface of the skin, and you're sure it's not associated with laundry detergent or something like that, and it usually isn't, you want to look for digestive symptoms. Okay, she's going to have something going on in the digestive system, either loose stools, constipation, gas, bloating. There'll be some kind of digestive symptom. Does that make sense, Leon? She won't, she's not going to just have a skin problem. She's going to have also a digestive issue. Now, if she's one of the rare cases where there's a topical thing happening, like something's getting on top of the skin, she's going to have to eliminate that, but that's rare. Most of the time, it's a digestive issue, and it's much more serious. It's much more significant than simply itchy or rash because it means that her immune system is activated. It's jumpy. It's sensitive. It also means toxins are getting into the blood. So look for digestive symptoms and then match those digestive symptoms to foods. You might have to do a food diary and then eliminate those foods. Next thing you're going to want to do is start to use digestive support. Yes, I, you know, it's kind of weird. Oh, I have itchy skin. Use mm, digestive support. People don't make that connection. It's counterintuitive. But I'm telling you, this is where the, this is where much of the defensive responses and rashes and allergies and itchy itchy sign, itchy symptoms come from. So look for digestive sympt uh, digestive symptomology. Match them up to foods. Eliminate the foods. Then use the ultimate enzymes after all meals. You might throw some apple cider vinegar in there. The Biolumin Nightly Essence: two capsules or three capsules in the morning, two or three capsules at night. And then the Fucoidin Z, also wonderful for helping patch up the digestive system. If you want a couple other nutrients for digestive health and digestive wellness, there's a great supplement called Zinc Carnosine, which will get you some zinc and also has something called Carnosine in it. We haven't talked too much about that, but that's also very good for the digestive system. Glutamine powder, or you can get glutamine in uh, the Slender FX or in whey protein. That can help you. Jordan Rubin's, uh, help your daughter, I should say. Jordan Rubin's Beyond Organic products might be helpful for you as well. And then any cartilage products, uh, bone soup, which is a cartilage food, cartilage-rich food, and then also the glucogel caps, which can help build connective tissue in the gut and support intestinal health. That might be something else you want to try. Uh, bile salts, lecithin, those are also supplements you can get in a health food store, and they may help your, your daughter. Most importantly, though, look to problem foods for all skin rashes, skin itchiness, or skin issues in general. i got to move on, Leon. Thank you so much for your call. Hey, Appreciate yeah. it. Oh, shoot. Leon, I apologize. I cut you off. I'll call us back. I'm sorry, man. Alexander, New York. What's going on? Alexander, going once. Hello, yes. Hey. How are you? I'm good. What's up, man? Oh, good, Ben. Uh, I have digestive problems, and okay. 
I do. I go to, I go twice a day, but it's like I have to force it. Not good. Your your con your uh, intestines are frozen. They're freaked. Constipation, chronic constipation. And by the way, two times a day, one time a day, three times a day, that's not as important as, as it is. Uh, what you want to look for is the connection or the relationship between your food and the time it takes for you to have a bowel movement. So it's not so much the, the number of times per day as much as it is uh, the relationship of the, your bowel movements to, the, to your meals or to your foods. So within, you want to be having a bowel movement anywhere between 6 to 12 hours after a meal sometimes maybe five, five to 12 hours after a meal. If it takes you longer, you're constipated. If you want to test this, by the way, you can do some charcoal. Go get yourself some charcoal capsules at a drugstore or even just eat some beets and see how long it is for your stools before you, before you have a bowel movement where your stools are black or, or where your stools are red. And that will give you a, a rough idea of what's called transit time, the time it takes for food to go from your mouth to the other end. And that'll give you, that way you can assess constipation. But I'm just going to assume that you're constipated. Do you have a hard time evacuating like you're pushing? Uh, yes. Okay, Absolutely. two things. Okay. And I want to also know if you have a book or some place I can go to get more information about you and about me? You can go to the post office and look at my mugshot. <laughs> no, I'm just te just teasing. No, uh you can go to badboyfriend.com. I think there's something up on me on there. No, I'm just kidding again. Alexander, don't do that. Um, there's no books. I don't have a book. I'm writing one, and you know what? It's a lot harder to write a book than you think. I always admire people who write books because I've been trying to write one for a long time. But your like honesty, to... you, you're going to get there. I, I, I will. It's like birthing a baby. It's, it's definitely coming out, and I can feel <laughs> it coming out. But it may, it may take me nine, nine years or something instead of nine months. Anyway, here's what you want to do, all right? First of all, uh, you want to, when you're having a bowel movement, this is very important, you want to relax your body when you're having a bowel movement, okay? The uh, evacuation of the bowels is regulated by the relaxation nervous system. You know what you could even do, Alexander, before, uh, if you really have a problem, anybody who's constipated, uh, take a hot shower and let the hot water contact your belly. And this, by the way, is a great strategy for all intestinal problems. Let the hot water contact your belly when you're in the shower. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you're standing in the shower. Okay, so and let the hot water just contact your belly. And as you're letting it contact your belly, practice on practice deep breathing, focusing on the exhale, the part where you go, ah, like that. And you'll find yourself completely relaxing, and you'll also find your intestines relaxing. And then you can, when you're done with your shower, go sit, you know, go have a bowel movement. And you'll notice it's a lot easier to do it. Also, when you're trying to evacuate, I don't mean to be gross here, but this is very important. When you're trying to evacuate your bowels, breathe out. Don't do what's called the Valsalva maneuver. Weightlifters know about something called the Valsalva maneuver. The Valsalva maneuver is when you're on the bench press. Do you ever lift weights, Alexander? You know, uh, years ago. Years ago. Uh, there's the music. Man, that music comes at the most inappropriate of times. Alexander, when you're on the bench press, when you go uh, 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 like that, that's the wrong way to lift weights, right? That's called the Valsalva maneuver, and you're much weaker when you do that. Same thing when you're on the, uh, on the jaw and having a bowel movement. You don't want to go, uh, 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 you want to go, ah, uh, relax, open everything up. And that's a great way to have a bowel movement. The constipation problem is caused by intestines that are freaked out, look for problem foods. If you want more information, bro, send me an email, ben at ksco.com, or call back tomorrow. We'll take calls in our second segment. We got uh, Sonia, uh, Sonia Satar talking about motor size tomorrow on the bright side. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, spectacular, beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.